So next up, we have a conversation about using standards to drive technology for data-driven appraisals. So come on up, uh, Jeff and Mitch from QV Casa and Data Master. Test, test, can you hear us? Hello. So Mitch and I are here today um, to talk about a subject that at first glance is going to feel very unexciting, appraisals. And I just think I saw half the room actually start to fall asleep right when I said that. Uh, but we promise uh, this is not just gonna be a, a long academic discussion of appraisals. This is a kickstart to a topic that we think, you know, all the real estate data driven people in this room are gonna find pretty exciting. Uh, and that is how do we collect new, better, richer property data and, and media upfront in the listing process to drive an extremely improved experience for the buyers and sellers that we ultimately all serve. So bear with us through some appraisal talk. I promise it'll get more interesting. How do I control? Probably should have validated that. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Quick appraisal industry update for everybody. Um, a lot of folks in this room probably have a horror story about an appraisal, uh, about how long it took, about how frustrating it was, about the lack of transparency, the uncertainty as your buyers and sellers uh, that you may hear about wait to find out what the value is and if it's gonna kill the deal. So here's some stats that underlie those painful experiences you've been hearing about. Um, we have a serious problem with appraiser capacity in the US and it's, it's getting worse. Um, so there's serious barriers to entry to the industry it's very difficult for new folks to get into the profession. And as a result, uh, we have a major capacity issue. The yellow line represents the number of unique active appraisers over the last seven years. And that number has essentially steady. Um, we've had some leaving, some entering. The average age of the appraiser is now probably in the 60s. Um, and on top of that, you have record setting appraisal volume. So the, the blue lines and the green lines represent completed appraisals that were submitted to Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac via UCDP. So those two lines running at a counter trend have created some pretty negative issues. We've got a 50% growth in the number of appraisals needed, but no change in the number of appraisers available to service it. We've got a 24% increase in the average cost of an appraisal to a consumer. In some markets now, folks are paying north of $1,000 pretty consistently for an appraisal. And we've seen the average turn time of an appraisal go up by 65% in just the last three years. So with that background, Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac have just recently announced a massive new change to appraisal policy, probably one of the biggest changes to policy in decades, and that's to offer a desktop appraisal option. They are only offering this on purchase loans, which is your guys' you know, bailiwick. They're not offering it on refis, they're offering it on purchase, where people are buying and selling homes. So in response to all that industry negativity, they rolled this out, just came to the, to the selling guide in late March, so this is all very new. But essentially, uh, you, uh, the, the loan can skip a full appraisal and do a desktop appraisal instead, so long as the appraiser can access a recent MLS listing with sufficient information, um, we'll talk about what that means, and an accurate floor plan with interior walls, uh, detailed calculations showing how the gross living area for that property is calculated. So not just total square footage, but actual ANSI compliant floor plan. So this is brand new. And the concept here is eliminating all of this work that the appraiser is doing today on the property data collection side. Right now the appraiser is scheduling appointments, driving to properties, inspecting, taking photos, getting all this data, and then also then driving back to their house to type up the report. And the average appraisal turn time right now, depending on the market, is gonna run you about two to three weeks. There's some better markets, but at the worst, that's what we've been experiencing. The desktop appraisal concept is I now, as the appraiser, am not gonna do any property data collection because I can count on my MLS to have what I need to do this appraisal. And the estimate is if we really get this humming and the market starts moving, we can get these completed in two to three days instead of two to three weeks. So you're shaving off weeks of uncertainty that buyers and sellers are have right now, questioning if the deal's gonna fall apart. So let's talk about those data requirements. Fannie and Freddie are data-hungry people. They expect data to be provided in a specific way for it to be used for this process. First is the photo requirement. 
Exterior photos are a requirement. You've got to have clear, descriptive color photographs showing the front, back, and street scene. And street scene is obviously not a typical photo taken in a listing process, but it'd be pretty easy to grab. Basically, you need to be able to get a photo that explains the neighborhood, the surrounding street scene around the property. Then there's interior photo requirements. The, photo, uh, the report ha has to have a kitchen, has to have bathrooms, has to have the main living area. And then these bottom two, examples of physical deterioration at present and examples of recent updates, those are a little squishy. I don't think you're gonna find a lot of agents uh, tagging an image with, here's some recent damage that I'd like to put <laughs> on my MLS listing. Uh, but this is Fannie and Freddie doing their best to essentially say like, hey, we expect as accurate information as we can. How they're gonna enforce these bottom two, that's tough. Uh, but kitchen, bathrooms, main living area, and exterior photos, that's easier for folks to enforce down the road as this gets more popular. To kick an appraisal back and say, hey, you're missing a street scene or you're missing this exterior photo. So for MLSs, for real estate data people, you're probably starting to think, okay, how do we make sure we get this, right? How, how do we make the market work by getting this data? The other requirement that we hinted at was the floor plan. Um, so it is a requirement. This is straight from the seller guide, and I think Riso puts these decks up uh, afterwards for folks to see. But you can go on the Fannie Mae or Freddie Mac website and just Google seller guide related to the desktop. You'll find all this language. Essentially, what they require is a floor plan that will give the appraiser a clear sense of what's living area and what's not living area. And that's how appraisers calculate square footage today in their appraisal reports. The reason they find floor plans so important and made this a requirement is because their belief, and I think this is accurate, is that an appraiser really can't get a sense of the property's flow or marketability issues that may or may not exist if they're not in the property unless they can actually see a flow of how the property moves. So it's really designed to give the appraiser everything they need to do to be successful. There's also calculation requirements, interior wall requirements. There's, there's quite a bit there. So strategically, what does this mean? It's a major opportunity, Mitch and I both feel, not to put words in your mouth, do. Uh, to enhance the relevancy of the MLS model. Uh, this is a great opportunity to get this data standardized, get it collected, and really put the MLS and the real estate data space at the center of making the market work. And it's also a great opportunity to collect better data up front. And Mitch and I are both gonna talk a little bit about technologies, ours and his, that provide some of this data collection through new tools and methodologies that can actually provide more accuracy to the process. How many of you trust the square footage information that's in your systems today? Okay. Um, good. Uh, so <laughs> <laughs> the, the agent is an interested party, right? They have an interest in the square footage being as high as possible. The agent, the agent is also not trained in how to collect ANSI compliant square footage data, room information, room dimensions, all that stuff. Um, so they're often put in a liability situation actually because they're trying to provide this data and really they're not necessarily equipped to do it. So a bit about our company and then I'm gonna turn it over to Mitch. Kubacasa is technology that allows anybody with a smartphone uh, to perform a five minute property scan with their phone uh, and receive back an accurate floor plan that meets all those requirements uh, and robust property data. There's no training required, there's no special equipment, there's no tripods, um, it just is something that works. Even a homeowner, an agent, or a real estate photographer can use it. And uh, advanced computer vision is what's driving a lot of this, um, and, and we're really proud of that. And we're also a proud partner of FBS. Um, our technology helps power their flow plan platform, um, and so uh, definitely they've been a key part of helping to bring us to the market here in the US. Where are my pointers? Oh. So what are the outputs of that five minute scan that anyone can do? Black and white marketing floor plan. So the standard stuff that you would see to help market a listing. And then the GLA floor plan that meets all those requirements with the specific calculations and, and outputs. And then there's also property data. This is an area that we're really excited about. How can we actually turn this into data that can help power a better, more consistent listing process that might reduce liability for the agent going forward? So huge opportunity, wanted to set that groundwork and I'm gonna pass it to Mitch. Absolutely, so two quick stories. Um, bought a home about six months ago. Uh, when the appraisal came back, you all know it was about 400 square feet different than what was listed. And I took that back to the agent and said, hey, this is different, and we talked about price, and her first question was, did the appraisal come in at value? 
said, yes, it did. She goes, should I move on to my second offer? Or third, fourth, fifth, and sixth? They, the agent really didn't care from that perspective and just kind of pushed forward to it. Um, and so the GLA and the ANSI standard, that is something that we're really excited about, how to standardize that. Um, if you think about the process, this is all the mortgage side that's driving a lot of this adoption at the GSC level. Um, desktop is the first product that came to policy. They're doing several what they call test and learns, right, or pilot programs uh, where they get with providers uh, like Hugo Casa, like ourselves and other people to participate in these pilots. Submit, uh, we run a lot of volume through it and they, they actually go stack rank how those perform versus traditional stuff. Um, so it'll be fun to see what else comes to market. Desktop's the first one there. It was kind of the easiest one to get to market because of all the data that's readily available. Um, but I want to tell you just a quick story that's, that's somewhat related. Um, think of the term highest and best use in real estate, right, or appraisal. It's a term we use frequently. Um, my dad loves to fish. He spends about a month up in Alaska salmon fishing, and I try to join him about every other, every other year up there. And I took my 12-year-old daughter and my 10-year-old boy with me for the first time last year, and we scheduled a halibut charter and paid for it, and that was the thing my daughter was most excited to go do. And about a week before our trip, they called and canceled that trip. And it was during the peak season, so I wasn't really able to find any other charters. And I didn't have the heart to tell my daughter that we weren't gonna go halibut fishing, because that's really what she wanted to do. And so I started Googling boat rentals. And uh, I am not a seaman, I've never really been on open ocean, and I found three people that would do it. And the first one I called, I said, hey, will you rent a boat? I told them I boated my whole life. I've been deep sea fishing 12 times. And they said, well, do you have any open big water experience? And I said, no. And he essentially hung up on me. He's like, I'm not renting you. So the second guy I called and said, hey, what are your requirements to rent your boat? And he said, you got to take this simple course and you got to come for an hour training and I'll let you take the boat out so long as it's good weather. I didn't tell him how experienced or unexperienced I was. Um, long story short, I ended up showing up took the family out, it was beautiful weather. There was a guy named Joe at the dock that asked me where I was going, and I could not find anybody to give me good coordinates for fishing. It's like asking for the firstborn child. And he just said, follow me out. He took us out, he taught us how to fish, we had a great day. Um, I lost it, hurled over the side, about killed my kids twice, we caught a ton of fish. But my point is, is highest and best use. Um, he put the slide up of appraisers today do everything. Right? They drive the property, they take the photos, they do the measurements, then they go back and do it, leading to that two to three week turn time. Um, what we're seeing, and I apologize to make you go through some of this um, pain, but Fannie Mae basically, they're trying to leverage big data, right? Power of analytics, technology, how do we accelerate and put that data in front of people so they can make the decisions? Um, it's supportive of the mortgage origination process, how they um, are automating underwriting, right? How are they, you know, if you think back to credit, when credit used to take weeks to get on a person, they've crammed that down to instantaneous. How do we go get essentially a credit equivalent on property? How do we take that from weeks down to days? Um, something that they've seen actually some improvement in is it's mitigating some of the bias that's happening. When you separate the appraiser from the physical inspection to just looking at the data, they're actually seeing a reduction in bias as well. Um, a couple things from the appraisal perspective. So at Data Master, we, we license data from many of the MLSs in the audience today. We meld that with public records and we try to accelerate their report generation. Um, so we partner with most of the appraisers. We actually work with about half of the appraisers in the country. Um, the appraiser's license is still on the line. When they sign this desktop report, their liability isn't any different. Um, it's up to them to build a credible and dependable report. So if you look in the top right, if an appraiser doesn't have sufficient information, they actually have to decline or refuse and kick it back to a full-blown appraisal. So that elongates that turn time, right? If we go order a desktop, sufficient information isn't there, and they have to kick it back, that can add another five to 10 days on top of that, uh, that scenario. Um, if you look at Freddie Mac, they actually, they point to COVID-19 when we couldn't go into homes and accelerated a lot of the technology and kicked off a lot of these pilot programs um, into high gear. Um, when this kicked off, as you can imagine, there were a ton of questions that hit the appraisal community. Uh, I think 55% of appraisers uh, in a poll two weeks ago said they don't trust data gathered by a third party, right? 
or a realtor or homeowners. They're used to getting that data. So I think one of the lifts that we have as an industry and as technology partners is to figure out how to drive that confidence, um, instill that we're getting the right data, putting it in front of the right people, and they can start to have that confidence in them. So one of the, one of the main questions I want to highlight is the appraiser cannot make any assumptions about the interior of the home. They can't just assume that it's the same condition as the exterior. They can't assume um, any of that. They have to have sufficient data source to verify what the condition is inside um, to where they, they feel comfortable signing on the line. GLA has been brought up a handful of times. Um, Fannie Freddie basically said 80% of the time GLA on an appraisal matches identical to public records. So whether they're just pulling that, coincidental, I don't know. Um, but what happens when we have a tech that gives a different GLA than public records, what MLS does? It's still up to that appraiser to analyze those different data sources, reconcile that data, and still sign his, line, um, sign his name and license on there. Um, and the last one, Jeff talked a little bit about some of the deficiencies. Those typically aren't highlighted <laughs> from a realtor perspective. Um, it still can be done. A desktop can still be performed if there are deficiencies on the property. Again, it's just up to that appraiser to reconcile that data. Um, so just a couple statistics. Traditional appraisal is what we consider where the appraiser is doing full inspection, everything soup to nuts, and the analytics. Uh, we call our product digital, and that's inclusive of desktop, right? So you'll hear the term bifurcation, where we're bifurcating the appraiser from the inspection and having someone inspect and someone do the analytics. Sometimes that's an appraiser team, right, where a trainee's doing that inspection. Sometimes it's a homeowner with technology there, a realtor partner, photographer. Um, but if you look at this in the red column, these are basically just a, a sample of what traditional turn times are. This was data as of about two weeks ago. Um, in the column next to it in green is, is what we call desk, or our, our data delivery on the digital side. So that's when someone's doing a desktop, when someone else is going out and inspecting. So 14 days down to two days, uh, 6.4 down to two. Um, if we look across the country, on average, we're at about five day turn time. Um, and what's interesting, today we are kind of scrambling on the back end when a mortgage transaction starts. That's when we're going out to see if the data is readily available, right? Um, he talked about the goal to drive to a two-day turn time on appraisal. That's possible if we can start to get that data at list, right? And it's this team here of MLS and brokers and agents um, that if we start to figure out what's needed to facilitate the mortgage transaction, what qualifies a property to be desktop ready, or one of the tests and learns that's in, in process right now is a hybrid. Um, Jeff alluded to the fact that GSEs are data hogs. They want more data, right? So in the hybrid product that's in test and learn or pilot right now, they actually require full data capture. They, they require a full inspection. And then the appraiser, someone different, can go do the analysis and, and value the conclusion. So these numbers are basically our desktop, some of the hybrid and some of the other policies that are, that are out there in test and learn that we're testing, but we're seeing awesome improvements. So one of the invitations that I'd, I'd ask this community to think about is how do we drive adoption at list? There's some really cool technologies. We're two of them. There's many other, others in the audience and, and in the marketplace. The data is there. It's readily available. How do we arm the systems from the MLS platforms to read that data up in? How do we automate draft listings from 3D scan inspections, from GLA, from these applications? Um, it's there. We can get to that two-day turn time if we can start to get more of that data readily available and get the confidence there. Um, another stat that's kind of fun, revision is something that we track heavily on the appraisal side. Um, we see 50% less revisions on these products, uh, which to me, when you standardize data, um, provide the data, we have to go back to the appraisers 50% less often on reports. The 70% is when a lender has to come back to, to class valuation. Um, for questions on that report, which just leads to turn time and quicker quicker options for you guys. Um, in terms of how we're approaching it, um, class valuation, for those that don't, don't know, they actually acquired Data Master last year. Um, they're one of the largest AMCs in the country, and we work with almost half of those 40,000 appraisers that he, that green line in the first graph of active appraisers submitting. Uh, we partner with almost half of those appraisers to facilitate appraisals. 
Um, and our approach has been the 3D uh, scan technology, right? So we go take 2D imagery, we stitch it together, and, and everyone in here is very familiar with a virtual tour. Um, we're taking that virtual tour and we're basically turning it into a virtual inspection for the appraiser. Um, it's unfiltered data, they're able to walk through the home. Um, the way it's captured is a little bit different. We use a nationwide scanning infrastructure where people are trained, background tested, and service oriented. And uh, we actually use the iPhone with a tripod and a rotor to go room by room by room to go capture all of that data. Um, the way the data is stored, um, and in the architecture is basically to all the standards that Fannie and Freddie are driving from a MISMO perspective. How do we count GLA from ANC, bedroom count, bath count, above grade, below grade, all that information. Um, so we're really creating a digital twin, a 3D tour that you can walk through. Um, it can be used for marketing, but the primary purpose is for the full inspection for the appraiser. And we're really trying to figure out how to bolster the data that they have so they can make educated decisions uh, from that perspective. Um, from the desktop perspective, just like Jeff showed, the output uh, above and beyond from the 3D scan is marketing floor plan, ANSI standard appraisal floor plan or GLA specific, uh, the property report that's there, and then this, this team here, think about the API. All this data is available via API, right? What can we be pulling back? What should we be presenting? What data should we be packaging uh, to make these properties and that data available at list? So, any questions? Dan? Uh, great question. It, it takes about 30 minutes to do an average property. So there's about 100, 180 photos that are taken per room at three different apertures, and it kind of goes floor to ceiling and just captures all of that. But yeah, on average, it's about 30 minutes. Appliances get asset tagged. You can get the serial number, make, model, all that stuff for effective age. Um, good question. Over here. everybody hear the question? Okay. The question was about the pending uh, litigation at the Supreme Court related to IP of floor plans. Um, so. Good luck. But yeah. <laughs> Is Mitch Skinner here? Can, can he help? Uh, so uh, I'll give my opinion uh, with the caveat that I'm not a lawyer at all, but I know a couple uh, that are it's really involved in this discussion. So um, yeah, essentially the lawsuit is um, born of an architect as I understand it, who essentially, you know, is making a claim that um, for somebody to, to provide like kind of a pictorial representation of the floor plan of the property, you know, it was a violation of uh, his or her intellectual property rights because they designed the property. Um, it's a pretty ridiculous lawsuit um, on, a, on a lot of levels. Um, and unfortunately, there was a, a kind of a, a district court that ruled in favor of the architect. Um, that is going to be brought to the Supreme Court as we understand it, for, for potential review. Uh, there's been an amicus brief filed by many, uh, you know, very concerned, interested parties in the industry, including NAR, CMLS, um, uh, actually with, with Mitch's involvement. Uh, Kubikasa signed our name to the, to the NAR briefing, Zillow, Redfin, all these different groups, and a ton of appraisal and mortgage-related groups as well. Floor plans are utilized everywhere all the time, not just the real estate listing process, but in the appraisal process. The, the six to eight million of those produced every year, every single one has to have a floor plan. So it's a very impractical concept that now everybody's gonna have to validate the IP of the architect who might have built the house in 1920. Uh, so everybody feels there's a pretty strong legal argument that this is going to get, this is going to ultimately get killed, uh, but it's something everybody's monitoring very closely. Anything you'd add to that? Yeah. Fantastic. And copyright, uh, some MLSs have rules that appraisers have to call each agent to request to use that photo in their report, whether it's adhered to or not. Copyright's always going to be an interesting perspective. For sure. From photos, imagery, floor plan, it'll be interesting how it shakes out. And there's copyright, to your point, there's always discussion around copyright of photos in MLS, and the industry has found a way to work through that and make it work. We think there'll be workarounds for this as well, assuming the lawsuit doesn't go the way we want it to. Thank you. Mm -hmm.